The GameCube had some amazing titles like Super Mario Sunshine, Wind Waker, and Super Smash Bros. Melee. And although these are all great games, they all have something in common. Along with many other GameCube hits, they all have a ton of glitches. Some bugs were found quickly after the game's release, while others were discovered years later by hardcore fans intentionally trying to break the game. It's impossible for developers to patch up all the cracks that come along during development. So we're not throwing any shade on the developers here. We're just exploring some rather fascinating details that fans have discovered over the years. We'll most certainly be covering the aforementioned Melee, Sunshine, and Wind Waker, but first, we'll start with a look at a third-party game to demonstrate that, of course, it wouldn't just be Nintendo games that players have managed to completely bugger up. Although Resident Evil 4 has been ported to basically everything these days, it was once only playable on the good old cube. And this version of the game features a pretty unique glitch that makes a menace out of the sweet and innocent. During one segment of the game, the player is forced into playing as Ashley. While Leon may have a wide array of weaponry at his disposal, Ashley sadly must avoid combat altogether. That is unless the player wishes to take advantage of an interesting glitch. By opening a door directly into one of the zealots who is attempting to capture the presidential daughter, it's possible to stun them, which opens a prompt for Ashley to perform one of Leon's signature moves, the suplex. This was of course entirely unintended and was likely an oversight by the game's developers, but it certainly shows Ashley's true strength in any case. The glitch is actually exclusive to the game GameCube release of the game having been redacted in all future ports. Another popular third-party title that many chose to play on the GameCube was Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Budokai is very fondly remembered as a fighting game, but that doesn't mean it's the most polished. Some funny visual glitches can be performed in the game when playing on the Cell Games Arena, which were clearly overlooked. Here, moving to the edge of the arena and performing a taunt can result in the character's leg bending in a clearly unintended manner. Another glitch which can actually lead to a competitive advantage during gameplay involves special attacks. By performing an ability against your opponent and simply pausing the game just before the attack lands, the move will deal a significantly increased amount of damage when the player unpauses and lands a blow. While many improvements were made with Budokai's sequel, Budokai 2, this title also had its fair share of glitches. Once again, the game introduces a special skill that can be used to give the player a strong advantage over their enemies. This time, however, it's played without a pause menu and is tied only to Cell or Android 17 and 18. The trick requires the player to perform a taunt at the exact moment in which the energy field attack is used. In doing so, the player will have managed to freeze all elements on screen, not just their opponents, but the scenery as well. No hyperbolic time chamber needed. The only method of undoing this frozen state is by giving the opponent a good seeing to. Probably one of the biggest games on the GameCube was an entirely different fighting game, the second entry in the Smash franchise, Melee. Most of you probably know a little about what we're going to talk about, but it seems that there's actually more to it than we initially let on in our first video about the Smash series. Daisy's trophy, quite notoriously, has a hidden third eye, only visible by manipulating the game's camera and looking under her hair. While this eye is creepy enough on its own, it isn't actually the whole truth when it comes to Daisy's increased optics. She actually has more, lots more. By extracting the model from the game and viewing it through a standard 3D application, it's possible to find that her head is actually covered in additional eyes. In-game, most of these extra eyes were left in, but made invisible by the developers. And the reason that the more recognized third eye can be seen is simply because the devs forgot to make that specific eye invisible. Another odd bit of behavior in Melee can be seen with Mr. Game & Watch and his ability to absorb projectile attacks. By using the Oil Panic attack to absorb three projectiles which are strong enough, such as three fully charged PK flashes, and then using the resulting attack against the character who is holding out their shield, not only will the enemy's shield be broken, but Mr. Game & Watch will find himself blasting off at an alarmingly fast our speed. In most cases, by using this attack, the result is that Mr. Game & Watch will die by being flown off the stage, unless of course there is a wall to stop him. This is the reason that the glitch has become known as the Kamikaze glitch. Speaking of running into a wall at light speed, glitches are sometimes the means that the greatest fan accomplishments for a game can be achieved, such as the absolutely staggering speed of the world record for beating Luigi's Mansion. The only reason that the game has been beaten in such a short period of time is the result of a glitch which occurs when Luigi has defeated the first boss of the game. When being transported back into the mansion from the boss arena, it's possible to force Luigi 
Luigi behind a chest, which will then push him out of bounds of the stage. This means that he can navigate in the dark or above the ceilings of the mansion's corridors to find areas that otherwise would have been inaccessible, including, it turns out, the final room of the game. As you can imagine, the result of this simple glitch is the ability to skip what is essentially most of the game, but sometimes the results of glitches aren't quite so helpful. While Luigi's Mansion makes the game shorter, Pikmin has a glitch that can postpone completion by quite a while. This glitch isn't even all too uncommon of an occurrence, and as a result, has led many players finding themselves in a very unfortunate situation. The main goal of Pikmin is to collect the various parts of Olimar's ship so that he can escape from the planet Pien. 404. This sees him travel across the world to find many ship parts, including a piece known as the Libra ship part. As a result of how high up this piece of the ship is in the game's level, there's a chance a glitch can occur in which the ship piece will fall and through the game's physics, bounce in a way that will throw it out of bounds. Normally, it would simply respawn close to an area where it fell, but because of the extreme bounce that resulted in it falling out of bounds, it will instead just be impossible to obtain. One of the mechanics of Pikmin is that the ship pieces don't simply reset their position when an in-game day has progressed, as one might assume. So, the Libra will essentially be stuck flying around out of bounds. The only means to correct this glitch is for the player to reset their game without saving. If the player continues to play the game with this ship part clipped out of bounds, they are unable to obtain both the best or even simply the good ending of the game because the Libra is a mandatory part of the ship. Super Mario Sunshine has a pretty fascinating glitch that doesn't really do much at all besides from changing how the game looks. The Invisible Delfino Plaza glitch lets players visit Delfino Plaza where all that can be seen is its occupants, flora, and a few other details. There are multiple ways of triggering the glitch, but the most well-known way of executing it is to use Flood's nozzle rocket at the entrance of the blue coin exchange hut and wait for the hut's insides to pop up, then immediately dive out of the room. Mario will then be falling down to the ocean, but will stop before he hits the water on an invisible plaza. This is actually the same Delfino plaza that Mario usually runs around on, but its geometry is not being rendered. Only the collision data and objects within it. The plaza is invisible because of how the game handles entering and leaving certain rooms. Many rooms in the game are actually bigger than the building that holds them, a little like the Doctor's TARDIS in Doctor Who. Obviously, this would defy physics. So, to get around this, developers used a system that warps Mario into a different area when he walks into a room. And in Delfino Plaza's case, the rooms are far above the map. When it appears that Mario just walked into a room, such as the blue coin room, he actually is being teleported high up by touching a warp object. And the same process is repeated when Mario leaves a room, only he's warped downwards. When Mario is warped, Delfino Plaza also stops being rendered. And the rendering doesn't resume until Mario uses the warp to return. So if the player bypasses that warp, they get to experience a Delfino Plaza with a near total lack of detail. If you want a bit more info on this glitch, you should check out Scrumpy's in-depth video on it. Sometimes glitches can help those that want to run through a game as quickly as possible, but at other times, glitches can actually reveal a part of the game that otherwise would have never been discovered. This is the case for The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which holds a secret that would not be visible if not for a very simple oversight. It's believed that the only means of exposing this secret is by exploiting a glitch, in which the player must go to the bomb shop on Windfall Island. By equipping the Tingle Turner and trying to use it, but at the same instance opening the inventory and switching the Turner for a bomb, the player will find that they actually pull out a bomb instead of the tuner. This means that the player is actually able to throw bombs in an area that under normal conditions would not allow Link to do so. Because of this, the player will then be able to use this bomb to destroy crates behind the storekeeper, revealing that there are actually pigs stashed in these crates the entire time. Did you also know that the starting Pokemon in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness were originally going to be completely different, or that there was almost a revival of Earthbound for the GameCube? For a whole hour of even more GameCube facts, check out the video on screen. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more video game trivia. Every time you subscribe, we get an extra subscriber. Think about that.